All right, guys, so excited to have you here for this third and final info session. This is specific to um, a 40 day challenge that did start last week. However, you can still sign up. It's not too late. Um, I will go over all of that information and I'm going to talk about um, how you can heal yourself, getting to the root cause of your addictive behaviors. And I'll explain what addictive behaviors and all of that kind of stuff as we go along. Um, I think it's going to blow your mind. A lot of the people, um, myself included, I was in the health and fitness industry, um, for almost two decades. And so I have coached thousands and thousands and thousands of people on health, fitness, weight loss, so on and so forth. I, I mean, I actually worked with people on, with emotional eating, um, worked with people on uh, cutting back on sugar, alcohol, um, just eating super clean, super food, nutrition, you know, understanding that our body is a temple, food is thy medicine, right? And so you would think that I would know um, how to not have addictive behaviors, but I think you're going to have your mind blown today that there's a lot more behind addictive behaviors, what causes them, and actually what are they? I had a lot of people when I told them about this, this challenge that they're like, oh, I don't have any addictive behaviors. And it was so cute because I would message them on Facebook and they would instantly see it and they would instantly respond. <laughs> so I, I say this with love. I'm like, hmm, no addictive behaviors. Maybe, maybe notification checking and quick response. I've been there, done that. And so um, uh, we'll dive right in. I, I, I digress. So Welcome everybody um, to this info session. Please make sure you are in a quiet place if you can, distraction free and taking notes. I do like to say that an open mind leaves a chance for someone to drop a worthwhile thought in it. And I'm gonna tell you some things today that, that might, they may even trigger you. You may disagree and I am all about that. Um, I believe you, have got to have your own opinions, your own thoughts. You have your own wisdom and your own mind. And I really want you to trust that. And then I would invite you as you're taking notes to open your mind. There might be something I say today that just, you're like, whoa, whoa. I need to write that down or watch the recording again. Um, because a lot of this stuff was transformational for me over the past two years. My vision is to help a thousand people be and become super conscious creators for their best health, their best wealth, by trusting their own innate wisdom in 2023. I am the founder of the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast, which has been going strong for two and a half years, almost 260 episodes, I believe, as of today. And I'm just so honored and humbled um, that I'm, number one, I'm still going. Um, and number two, that it's now become a mantra. It's become a movement for me to be able to really pour my education, knowledge, and transformational experience over these past 24 months into all of those who not only listen into my podcast, but also sign up for my subscription. This 40-day challenge is part of my subscription community. So for those of you who don't know, some of you heard my story many times, so I'll keep it simple. Um, in early 2021, I was at what I call mental, physical, spiritual rock bottom. My marriage was on the rocks, making tons of money, like 20 to 40K months pretty easily, but I, I had to work hard to make that money. That was my belief system. And I had to be, uh, basically became a people pleaser, um, was working really imbalanced hours, checking my messages, feeling like a worthless mom, not present with my children who were seven and, uh, or eight and 12 at the time. It was 30 pounds heavier than I wanted. Remember, I was in the fitness industry. <laughs> I was a marathon runner. So in theory, how could I gain 30 pounds? But I did. And why was I trying dieting when I coached thousands of thousands of people and told them dieting doesn't work? My clients were doing okay, but many were having similar stressors and struggles saying, I'll be happy some day when looking at, again, external results as their measure of their worth. I was been drinking multiple times a week. I was depressed, shameful, and pretty judgmental about that. I felt numb and dead inside. I was struggling with a lot of grief. My parents had both died. 
and my brother in a very, very, very short window of time. Um, and I just wasn't really willing to face it. It was, it was scary. I never really wanted to even try to recover. And something was gnawing at me inside. I wasn't myself. Business coaches, therapists, courses, and books were not working for me. I don't know. Can anybody relate? Feel free to type in the chat if, if any of this resonates with you or if you've seen people in similar struggles, especially during the pandemic. Well, what happened next? I struggled. I struggled with where to be, even begin amidst the internal chaos and busy mind. And I consciously knew, because I was a very positive person, I consciously knew that I am not my results. Right? I've, I've done Ironman triathlons, marathons. I've coached thousands and thousands of people. Why am, am I struggling? Right, I, I'm super strong, right? <laughs> but I, I hadn't really gotten to the root cause. I was looking at the, the effects in my life and, and, and quite honestly, judging myself harshly as well. And I understood that I even hired a subconscious mind coach um, here in San Diego where I live. Um, and it wasn't wasn't really working for me very much. It did a little bit, but I knew from that, that I was unconsciously, or as they say, subconsciously, same thing, um, self-sabotaging myself daily by drinking too much, working too much, people-pleasing, codependency, all of the things that I'm going to share with you that I believe are addictive behaviors. And I focused on the effect first, not the cause, right? So what does that mean? What does it mean to focus on the effect, not the cause? Well, you know, I, I actually signed up for a program called Take a Break from Drinking because I was drinking three to four bottles of wine a week, guys. Easy, easy. So I was struggling with alcohol. I was using food for comfort. I was also scrolling on social media a ton because that's where all the leads were, right? This was the pandemic age. I was working seven days a week. I was getting texting notifications constantly, also on Facebook, so on and so forth. So, so these, all of these listed here were a part of that program that I studied to really understand addictive behaviors and specifically my relationship with alcohol because I had a really judgmental um, thought process around alcohol. So these are what I call the effects. These are the tangible addictions that are most commonly thought about and believed to be when I say addictive behaviors to people right away they go well I don't I don't drink too much I don't eat too much I don't watch too much tv so on and so forth right well here is what I got to <laughs> play with for the last two years so since April of 2021 I went on a deep dive healing path and I'm going to share with you how I got to the root cause today. And then of course, invite you to join me um, inside of my healthy and wealthy and wise addictive behavior challenge. I was really overgiving, people pleasing. I had no healthy boundaries. I, I had these limiting beliefs that I was not enough, not worthy. I had shiny object syndrome. I would start something and I wouldn't finish it. And then I would forget, you know, even like, have you ever gone to the bedroom and you forgot <laughs> why you went there? <laughs> and I'm not saying that I don't do that now, but that kind of stuff was happening all the time. My to-do list would never get completed. I was over committing, saying yes, being all things to all people without even thinking. And then of course I was overthinking, took a lot of headspace, right? To be feeling shame and beating myself up and all of that kind of stuff. And I'd be overanalyzing. The ego was on overdrive. I was also addicted to overwhelm. If I got overwhelmed, like there'd be this adrenaline rush, this dopamine hit. And that's actually also addicting. You can be addicted to drama and cause your own challenges. Again, neurotransmitter related, um, dopamine related gossip or worrying about others, something that I also um, had a lot of uh, modeling as a kid growing up and really just overdoing anything. I, I was always an overachiever since childhood. And so I just assumed that I, I just had an addictive personality, type A overachiever, right? That's, that's my blessing, my curse, whatever you want to call it. 
And many of these, you probably can't read everything on the slide, so I'm going to read it for you. Many of these have to do with unconscious traumas and responses to those unconscious emotions, feelings that would take up so much headspace. I remember waking up with a hangover and just spending the first hour worrying, judging myself, having a lot of shame around that. And then of course, having a lot of shame around working too much and not being present with my kids, you know, being on my phone all the time, even on weekends, even on date night with my husband, right? You can't get much intimacy there when you're on your phone in the presence of others, but that's where I was at. That's where I was at. So if you know much about trauma responses, I, I invite you to watch a documentary called The Wisdom of Trauma. The Wisdom of Trauma with Gabor Mate. Write that down. Uh, it's not on Netflix or anything. It's not free. I think you do have to purchase it, but I will tell you it's one of the best purchases I made in 2021 because I understood how, and, and his whole um, uh, trauma documentary is, is, is focused on the homeless addicts and and I'm not saying that I work with alcoholics, you know, alcoholics or um addicts or anything like that but but in the in the documentary he's working with these people who ended up there because of trauma. So if any of these things on the slide now take a close look um you have the fight or flight, you have the freeze or the fawn. The flight is the workaholic, overthinker, anxiety, panic, OCD. I definitely have had that. Difficulty sitting still, oh my gosh, me, 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 perfectionist, 100%. Fight was probably my weakest one on here. Um, however, I could, and I did at times, be, lose, as I like to say, pardon my French, lose my shit and have explosive behavior reaction. Again, the drama, the outbursts, I had that sometimes. Freeze, difficulty making decisions, feeling stuck. Dissociation is when you separate yourself and kind of like just ignore the situation just all together right fawn this is my probably my second biggest one behind the the flight is people pleasing lack of identities no boundaries overwhelmed that especially started after becoming a mom and a wife because i lost my sense of identity at that point who was i right? And then you start to blend into networking groups and all of these different groups and organizations. I lost myself trying to win the approval, the affection of mentors, coaches, so on and so forth. Anybody resonate with any of these on the slide? Type on the chat, which one of these four stands out to you as maybe your, your biggest one? Is it fight, flight, freeze, or fawn? Just take a stab at it. And, and no no pressure. There's never any requirements to, to share. Hey, Lee, good to see you. Another Floridian today. So what I also read during this time, because I started working with somatic breathwork um, facilitators, was that the body keeps the score. Gabor Mate talks about that also in The Wisdom of Trauma and how we hold so much trauma inside our bodies. And not just in this lifetime, but from our ancestors, our parents. Uh, I'll tell you a true story. I did a somatic breathwork session once and my mom, even before I was born, had tried to commit suicide. She, she literally drove a car into a moving train. And in my somatic breathwork session, I had that memory. It was before I was born, okay? So my mom carried that trauma from getting hit by the car or hit by the train, she lived, otherwise I would not be here. So I take, take my life a little, little seriously. My life is precious. I almost wouldn't have made it if she had not been, you know, I guess blessed enough to, to still be with us at that point. And so I carried her stuff as well as my dad's stuff and then my stuff. And you have so many micro traumas, even as a baby, even if you had a great childhood, Gabor Mate says, every time you didn't get your blankie fast enough, every time you didn't get your bottle or your food source fast enough, right away, boom, abandonment, rejection, feeling not enough. So since those behaviors didn't happen overnight, that's why it took me two years, guys, two years and a lot of really focused work. 
And here's the deal. <laughs> Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. I had a lot of these um, addictive behaviors 10 years ago. And I thought, well, you know, my husband's depressed. Um, he hates living in Minnesota. The winters are cold. We'll move to California. Everything will get better, right? <laughs> well, just because you change your zip code or your house or your lifestyle, remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Confucius said it best, right? Your past will be your future until you have the courage to create a new one. You may want to write that down. Just really let that sink in. Your past will be your future until you have the courage to create a new one. How many people are living life in the rear view mirror, right? Looking back, and that's usually unconsciously, but I'm using that analogy of how many people are um, just afraid. And it's, it's human to be afraid. Fear is, is also an addiction, right? So it takes a lot of courage to be on this path. So I applaud you. If you're on the healing path right now, I wanna encourage you to keep going. It, it can and will. Get better. As long as you don't give up, you will get better. So I realized I had been doing addictive behavior patterns my whole life. So as a kid, um, because of, of childhood traumas and things of that nature, I was I was constantly consuming sugar, bread, white bread, one bread, remember Wonder Bread, <laughs> um, which converts to sugar. I love pizza and uh, ketchup and all of these things. Sugar, 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 comfort food, right? I would always overeat as a kid always I would eat until my pants burst that was a sign of a trauma response eating too much anything too much is coming from that place of not enoughness and so I transferred from sugar and pizza and as a kid to coffee and Starbucks in my 20s as well as fitness fitness can be an addiction I, I've seen fitness addiction destroy marriages that's why I chose to stop being a marathon runner when I started having a family, because I knew there was no way I could keep that level of training 20 to 40 hours a week. And even if I was sick, even training, no matter what the weather, I would never miss a training session, right? So even fitness can be one of those things. So not surprisingly, in my 30s, I white knuckled it. I gave up sugar. I gave up coffee, but I didn't get to the root cause. I focused on the effect. Again, the effect being alcohol, the effect being food, the effect being, um, you know, sex or porn or, or whatever, TV, social media, all of the things that were on that slide earlier. However, because I didn't get to the root cause, you guys, I just kept transferring one behavior to another. And then, of course, stacking because I just was so exhausted and too tired and too afraid to get to the root cause. I'm here to tell you there's gold in them, there are heels if you choose to take this path. So what if I told you, you can get to the root cause of these and change your relationship with any and all behaviors and notice, notice I said your relationship. I am not here to tell you, you can give up your addictions or your addictive behaviors. That's not my perspective, although I do know abstinence works for a lot of people. And I, if you do that, I commend you. However, I did the abstinence model and it didn't work for me. If you can get to the root cause and then you choose abstinence for whatever, whatever it is, fantastic. But you are also human. You also got to just reframe things. And then once you reframe them, now it's not a crutch. Now you're not reaching for that drink, food, TV remote, whatever, in ways that is a crutch. So there is hope and I'm here to tell you and give you that today. So I got to the root causes over time. It took me all of these two years to really even have the courage to share my story, guys. Six months ago, I was terrified to be this real and authentic because I was still judging myself. I was still a little afraid to speak my truth because I figured other people would judge me. So over the next 30 days, if you choose to jump in and be a part of our, our program, you too can start to get to the root cause. Remember, it took me two years, but I also didn't have the support system that I've, I've created for you. One thing that I noticed also, as within, so without, everywhere you go, there you are. Part of my journey was also waking up to the truth and the real honest hard truth was that for nearly 16 years, 
up until that time of 2021, that's when I started waking up and going, aha, I don't have to be a victim here. However, I do get to take personal responsibility for the choices that I made. Because I was triggered by trauma responses and wounds that I, I couldn't see the forest for the trees around, I magnetized clients, people, partners, friends, who all embodied the same wounds that I had. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about these wounds throughout this presentation. They triggered me, but then I got addicted to the overwhelm, the people pleasing, all of the things that I listed on that second slide. And it inspired me to lose myself. That's where I talked about losing my identity and leaning on my addictive behaviors because they gave me those dopamine hits or they gave me the approval, the external validation that I was okay. Just like the baby who wants the blankie. I, I, I even, true story, I don't know if you've ever done this, type in the chat if you're brave enough to share. I, through this process, I actually slept with um, my daughter's teddy bear for six months because I wanted to connect and heal that inner child, that little girl. So until I went inward, inward, I could not change what I saw outside of me. Everything in your life is a mirror. Yeah, thank you, Catlin. Catlin has an amazing, uh, I'm going to be bringing her inside of my program soon and on my podcast. She's got an amazing inner child technique that um, helped me get a good somatic release. So stay tuned for that. But until I went inward, I could not change what I saw because everything is a mirror. 95% of your results in life, you've heard this before. Joe Dispenza is really big right now. Tony Robbins even talked about this. 95% of your results comes from that internal mirror known as your unconscious. A lot of people say subconscious, but I prefer unconscious because if you're not unconscious, to me, that's like, oh my gosh, like you're out. You're on autopilot, also known as your default mode network that automatic knee-jerk reaction to life. So I chose to slow down and become super conscious. I read a book and then I, I, I studied, um, got the certification. I studied with Christopher Michael Duncan. He's a great guy. Um, I've now made my own program and my, my own um, uh, offering because I feel like that book just, just barely scratches the surface, but it's really, really important to remember you're not broken. And we all have these, these shadows in our life that are underneath, like I said, the subconscious emotional wounds of not good enough. In my case, mine was actually never good enough. That's what I discovered is I would never be good enough. So therefore I needed to be perfect. So number one and number five were my top two limiting beliefs, my subconscious shadow. And again, I believe that you don't talk about this. You, you shouldn't be afraid of this. You know, I'm okay, right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, I don't want to talk about these things, right? That's the way I was raised. And a lot of times society is more of a think and grow rich, right? But if you don't face your fears and acknowledge the shadow, then you can't change. And again, there's gold in them. They're hills. These, these right here, are your healing points. These are your root causes. Unconsciously, these are driving you and they can have positive aspects, right? There's a, a positive aspect to these. And then there's the negative. We live in a polarity, you know, the, the dark and the light, the feminine and the masculine, like a battery, the positive and the negative. You have both sides. And it's really, really important for you to acknowledge both of them. So type in the chat, if any of these on this slide right now, one through six, which one stands out to you, like hits you square in the heart when you see it, or maybe your gut. It maybe makes you feel a little queasy. You can just type in the number if you want, or you can type in not good enough, not worthy, I'm insignificant, I'm not capable, I need to be perfect, I don't belong. That's a big one, especially in the pandemic. A lot of people went inward. I had quite a few friends commit suicide during that time. It's a really, really intense, intense time for our world, for our planet. I'll talk more about that later too. So my never enough wound was programmed early on, like I said, before I was even born. Um, my mom was a schizophrenic and there was three children before me. So I was the tail ender. You can imagine probably not a planned pregnancy, right? 
And I was even born in a mental institution hospital. So there's a lot of in and out of foster care. There's a lot of people raising me. It took a village, aunts, uncles, uh, strangers, foster parents. So I was always feeling abandoned, rejected, alone, and never enough. So I looked for so much external validation, type A, perfect grades, free ride to college with both academia and sports. I was in every sport I could because I was on autopilot. I wasn't even thinking about it per se. And again, there was good things about that, but it set me up for later in life, looking for that same achievement inside my career, inside my marriage, inside making money. You get the idea, right? So between the mother wound, my father wound, and ancestral trauma, those were driving my addictive behaviors. Those were my root causes, guys. Limiting beliefs absolutely were an important component, and I'm so grateful for having read that book and found that certification and studied for over a year now. However, really going deeper and making these my own processes as well, as well, well as my husband, um, I really was so, so relieved that I could not take this on anymore. A lot of times we beat ourselves up. We're our own inner critic. We're so hard on ourselves as humans. I should have, could have, would have. I should have known better. Ah, I am such a fuck up. Pardon my French. Ah, I, I made a mistake. All of those things also can be addictive, egoic thought processes, right? And I, I still have them, guys. I just want to remind you. But to acknowledge that it's not necessarily my stuff all the time. And I'm not projecting it on others and not saying, well, it's my dad's fault. Eh, it was my mom's fault. I also healed a lot of that. I recognized that the wounds that I inherited, if you will, were actual gifts because I got to heal it. I got to get to the root cause and break generational curses and cycles. Type in the chat if you're with me. Give me an amen if you're with me or a hell yeah. <laughs> Is this making sense to you guys? I love having um, audience participation so that you guys don't feel like uh, I'm just talking at you. All right. Great, Catlin. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you so much. And this is, like I said, you don't have to agree with everything I say. I said that at the beginning, but I'm hoping that something I say really triggers a positive change for you. So I already inferred this, but I wanted to have a slide just for this. We can't feel positive emotion without expressing feelings, seeing the negative and being able to hold yourself through it, transmute it. I got to learn how to parent myself. That's why I slept with a teddy bear for six months and I am not ashamed of that. My daughter was like, hey mom, <laughs> when do I get the bear back? And so really owning that shadow, really owning that pain and soothing myself without addictive behaviors to the best of my ability. This is what happened. So over 18 to 24 months, I became what I, I now coach on, a super conscious creator. Marriage is the best ever. My husband and I still have really good fights or arguments. Now we actually call them debates. <laughs> and right away, we, we realize, oh my gosh, this is coming from our ancestors, or this is coming from that wound okay, then we can have a really amazing truce and a really good makeup session. Making money in the flow of my current passion, working way less, guys. Oh my gosh, I take days off. I've, I've taken weeks off. I didn't do that two years ago, okay? I shut my computer down, usually by six o'clock at night, unless I forget something. But even then I'm like, eh, there's always tomorrow, right? Feeling deeply connected with my children. That's probably the one I am most excited about. They actually have their mom. I lost 30 pounds without dieting. And I, I mean to say I, I shed it because I don't want to gain it back. If you lose something, you usually find it, right? So I shed 30 pounds without dieting. Clients are having massive spiritual, emotional health and sales breakthroughs. Reframed my relationship. Notice the words reframed my relationship with alcohol and food in alignment with my health and my truth. Changed my relationship with grief. No longer stuck in a numb space. And I feel really, truly, honestly, uh, authentically and humbly saying this, I am at the highest and best version of myself in my whole life at age 45. 
when my ego does flare up and no, trust me, the ego is still there. The ego is my friend. I observe it and I say, okay, so why are you yakking at me right now? Why are you cranky? Why are you angry? Why? I'm more of a witness, an observer of those thoughts, those words. The ego could be really harsh. And I'm trusting my internal wisdom and intuition more so on a daily basis than I ever have probably since maybe I was a little girl. I don't know. And oh, by the way, I've already said this, but I really want to, I'm not a, I'm not a guru. Uh, I'm not a Tony Robbins. I, I, I really want to connect with you at the heart level and say I'm on the same playing field. I just might be a few paces ahead. I still have my addictive behaviors. Just last week, I actually had uh, a lot of wine and I, I still, I woke up the next morning with some, some shame and I was like, oh, hello darkness, my old friend. I see you. My ego is like, ah, look what you did. And then I realized, okay, all right. So what's underneath that? Why is there shame? Why am I feeling that way, right? So I'm on this journey with you wanting you to learn from my mistakes um, and my journey. So I hope that you guys can join me um, as as I continue this journey and this path. So these are my online um, Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Wellness Fundamentals. When I was going through this, you know, I was piecemealing it. I spent like over 60 grand, guys, these last two years. 60 grand. Healing retreats, lots and lots of retreats, lots and lots of one-on-one coaching, mentorship, Um, with healers, shamans, as well as um, plant medicine, as well as people in the somatic breathwork space, kundalini yoga certification or or not certification um, membership. So I was like, what does the world need right now? I shut down my sales coaching focused business and came all in on this because so many people are waking up to their truth. So many people are feeling anger, shame, guilt, fear because of the pandemic and all the things that are happening in this external world. And I'm not saying that we all are there and I'm and, and, uh, not assuming anything, but there's a lot of people and I talk to lots and lots and lots of people. And when I get real with people, they share stuff. And a lot of people, um, I just had another friend commit suicide this month. I've had 11 friends commit suicide. And this was a murder suicide. So it really, really hurt. So I lost two friends in one shot. And so I was like, mental health is so important to me. My mom is a schizophrenic and she never had something like this to help her. And I think if she did, who knows what my life would have been like, right? So I put together these five fundamentals to inspire, to empower, to encourage, and to equip people to live their best health, their best wealth. And specifically, we're talking about addictive behaviors. So it's, you know, definitely health and relationships. But oftentimes, if you're spending money and time on these addictive behaviors, they take up so much headspace, it's going to impact your income. Of course it is. So it includes breathwork, kundalini yoga, meditation, super conscious creation, and nutrition that nourishes. I'll explain those. I'll break those all down for you right now. So we will work on all of the bodies. What does that mean? Mind, body, and spirit, mental, physical, spiritual. And then there's also, if, especially if you study unconscious, um, subconscious stuff, um, trauma, there's the emotional pain body. It's actually part of us. And it's, it's usually, again, ancestral lifetime events, things of that nature. But, um, and it's connected to the subconscious or the unconscious mind. So we want to work on all three. It's a holistic approach. If you just work on mindset, I'm here to tell you, in my maybe not so humble opinion, it's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. So what are these fundamentals and why are they all in here? Let me explain the benefits. And again, they benefit all of them, in my opinion, benefited my mind, my body, and my spirit. So my mental, my physical, and my spiritual health, which are foundational parts of your core successes in life. And that's what I teach. That's what I believe. And that's what I've personally experienced through many successes and many failures. So breath work, like I mentioned earlier, I re- when I relived that experience when mom got hit by the, the train in her car, it does a lot more. It helps you balance your blood pressure, improves your sleep, reduces PTSD and trauma emotions that are stuck in the body. I've released a lot of somatic soma being body 
um, through breath work, crying, sometimes screaming, wailing, just letting stuff out. Not always, um, but it was really important for me to get into my body because I was so numb. I was shut down from my neck down, almost like I was paralyzed from all the addictive behaviors. That's what most of these addictive behaviors, they give us um, instant gratification and they impact our neurotransmitters. And oftentimes, you know, they're trying to numb us out. They're also known as numbing behaviors. So stronger respiratory system, better immune system, releases stress, moves your chi or energy flow, also known as life force energy. If, if, you know, if you've heard of that, increased creativity. I, I was really not back into writing, which was my passion for so long, which shut down, by the way, when I had a lot of trauma re-triggered. It increased the creativity, increased self-love and compassion. So now I'm writing again and I'm excited about it. Fundamental number two, and we have class today. If you sign up, um, we have class at three o'clock. Um, if you can't attend live, it'll be in the member vault. But Kundalini Yoga is different from Vinyasa, Hatha, Ashtanga, um, or Core Power. It includes movement, but also breath control, meditation, and some chanting. Helps deeply with addictive behaviors. The class at three o'clock today is going to be an hour with my best instructor that I've ever worked with. And it's going to be all around supporting your addictive behaviors. Um, increases the creativity also helps with grief recovery, rebalance and open the chakras and strengthens the nervous system helps with improved focus, clears brain fog, reduces stress and anxiety, transmutes negative emotions into positive, increases emotional intelligence, and so much more. Fundamental number three, this was something that I was shut down also. Um, I had even taken meditation classes, but again, because of my subconscious and unconscious triggers and traumas, especially like having to work so hard to make money during the pandemic, I shut that down. I didn't really meditate the way I knew how, and I knew it was important for me, you know, and some people pray, you know, meditation, prayer, to, it's, it's, it's really, they go hand in glove, um, addictive behaviors, meditation, inner child healing meditation. We also offer up a pineal gland, also known as third eye meditation, relationship healing meditation, gratitude meditation. And then I am going to have my husband coming in. He's going to be doing um, some other meditations and other experts are going to be helping you quiet the mind, get into the body and really, really connect with your heart space. Fundamental number four, what I've been talking about a lot, um, but I, I put those other three first because here's the honest truth. If you just do super conscious creation work on your own and you don't actually have those other three things to support you. In a lot of ways, it could just seem like uh, you're a hamster on a wheel, or in some cases, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of therapy because um, you're holding the stuff in your body. Uh, so that's that's why I put those other three fundamentals first. So if you bring the unconscious to the conscious, which is the name of my weekly class, you have the opportunity to shift. Once I understood a lot of the things that I'm going to share, a few more stories that I'll share with you and seeing my clients breakthroughs as well, these past few months, I'm starting to get it and really understand that knowledge is power, but then application of that knowledge. So when I learned about, you know, I was releasing some of my mom's trauma from even before I was born, I felt so much love and compassion for her. It started to heal my mother wound. It was so powerful. So, so powerful. So the self-conscious is the ego. Unconscious is your feelings, creates 95% of your results. That's what's also known as a default mode network where you're on autopilot and a, a trigger happens and boop, you don't even think, you just do. And it's usually based on those not enough limiting beliefs. And then of course, the mother wound, father wound, ancestral stuff. The super conscious is your intuition. A lot of people will call it higher self. I say it's the divine within as well as my intuition, but whatever word works for you, your connection to God, source, creator, if, if that also resonates, please just know that this is, as I like to say, non-denominational. It's, it's our super conscious energy was there before we were born. It'll be here when we die. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a connection. It's a collective energy, quantum, right? So... I wanted to just tune in. Um, there was a few other wounds that were really, really impactful for my addictive behaviors. And these are classes 
For those of you who are already inside the subscription, we'll be doing the ancestral trauma release class tomorrow um, at 3 p.m. I think. Just double check the calendar of events. But the mother father wound, we're going to have a class um, also on that. Religion and spirituality wound. Wound. There's um there's a time where I was very involved um, in religion and church and all that kind of stuff. Uh, not good or bad. It's just there was also a time where I shut that down. And it shut my connection down with my spiritual self, that spiritual health, oh my gosh, is so connected to abundance, is so connected to love and self-compassion. Um, but I had some really, really strong uh, tri triggers around that. And it, it held me back. And then that is when my not enough wound, especially reared its ugly head. There's life events, whether it's divorce, business failure, death, um, the grief wound, and more as they come up. How many of you guys, when you see these, think that maybe, just maybe, one of these, you can type in the chat, yes, if it, if it applies to you, um, only if, if you think one of these wounds is holding you back, causing you to self-sabotage through addictive behaviors, mindless behaviors. And if you feel called, you know, and you want to share which one, um, I, I do, I don't always read all of the comments, but it'd be nice to, to know. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. So then you just got to remember that our bodies carry seven generations back, the DNA of our ancestors on both sides. And I've actually gone further back. Um, cause a, when you think of a, a generation, right, that's usually like 25 years, but I've gone a lot further back a lot, a lot further back um, than that. But in general, sorry about that. I have a noisemaker that's going off. Um, hold on a second, guys. This is, bear with me. Oh, this is our friend who's picking up my children. So this was important. So thank you for bearing with me. So it's not all you. Right. And it's not all in this body in this lifetime. So wouldn't you like to know? My ancestral shame around alcohol and abandonment. So it was like a twofer. Um, when I did some deep dive one on one work um, around my shame around alcohol, you know, I, I would drink a lot and then I'd wake up the next day with shame. Um, and even telling that story, I wouldn't have been able to do that uh, a few months ago because there was so much judgment, so much shame. And then of course the abandonment, just why I put those together, I'll explain in the story, but when you abandon yourself with an addictive behavior, that of course is another version of abandoning yourself, not taking care of your body, not taking care of your mind, not taking care of your spirit. That's your own version of abandonment, abandoning you not putting your oxygen mask on first. And there probably was some kind of abandonment wound in your childhood or ancestral that you're carrying. So every time someone says no to you in a sales call, boom, you have that rejection abandonment trigger, not enough trigger, right? It's hard for you to ask for the sale. You probably have that abandonment also. But anyway, I digress. Um, I had a major breakthrough when through an ancestral regression session, and this is something me and my husband now do as well. Um, and tomorrow's class will be a, a group um, sampling of that. Get this. So going back in time through the regression, I discovered roughly around 400 AD when the Christian expansion was happening, coming up from Rome to France to Germany, which is where my ancestors were. Um, the Norse, the, the Vikings, so on and so forth, there was an expansion that was forcing conversion upon everyone that lived there. They didn't have choices. In fact, their choices were <laughs> feast or famine, live or die. So I guess they technically had choices. And there was a lot of them that chose death. There was a lot of them that chose death. Thankfully, my ancestors, um, they chose life. However, what happened was during this expansion of the conversion era, my ancestors were going to a village to warn the people there that the Christians were coming and they were wanting to protect them and, and give them that heads up. And then they were going to go and move on to the next village. Well, they happened to stay at this village this one night. And as good German ancestors would do, they drank a lot of beer, a lot of mead, and they stayed up late. And 
because of the alcohol and the staying up late, they ended up sleeping in. So they didn't hear the Christian expansion team coming on their horses. And before you know it, they were burning and killing some of the local villagers. And my ancestors were so ashamed, so angry, so stricken with self-judgment and criticism. And then, of course, they, they abandoned their own belief system because of this expansion, right? So there was a double whammy there. And guess what? I carried that. And guess what? I got to work through that and I got to heal that. And I got to love on it, accept it and re- frame it through, of course, continued action, continued connection with myself and my superconscious. So if you think about, and um, I was going to check on my time here, um, I, I'm not going to play the, the brain cell recode, but for me, like I like to bridge science and spirituality. I think they do both play well together. If you, if you've studied the quantum um, physics and, and quantum spirituality, um, there's a recoding of your DNA, a recoding of your brain. And if you rewire that brain, if you recode it and you take aligned action, that's where the forward progress, just because I had the knowledge and awareness about my ancestral, you know, uh, shame around alcohol and the abandonment, the not enough. I still have to take action in alignment with my higher self or my super conscious with my intuition. And that's where most people miss the mark. They study all the subconscious stuff, but you don't actually take aligned action and have guidance for that. Then you can be like, a, a, I have no, a lot of friends. This was who I used to be too. I'd be spending money on the next healing thing on the next course on the next, whatever. I was addicted to healing also at some point, you know, tons of supplements and all of these things, right? Again, trying to be perfect, but realizing that all of the answers lie within. And if I take aligned action and not just do a diet because my friend did it or not just do a program because my friend did it or whatever, is it really my true choice? And is it something that goes in alignment with my higher self? So again, kind of redundant, but I just really wanted to impress upon you that that's one of the things that we'll do at the end of every class is we take an aligned action together so that you can make progress. Instead of going two steps forward, three steps back, you're taking baby steps, but you're taking really amazing steps. I shared this with people online yesterday. Um, one of my wounds was the black sheep of the family. Um, being the baby, being very different, um, I was always feeling not enough and less than. And having a lot of those mother, father wounds, even ancestral stuff from my grandparents, you know, I always felt different. I felt kind of alone. However, what becomes the darkness becomes the light. Most black sheep of the family become self healers, breaking their generational curses of fear, guilt, and shame and starting their own lineage. So if you feel like you've been a black sheep and that's been kind of a curse, I'm here to tell you it's actually a blessing if you reframe that. And it took me a while, guys. It took me months to be able to reframe that. It's also important, this work we're doing now with the superconscious and the breath work and all of the five fundamentals is because we're going through this shift. Some people say the age of Aquarius starts in March. And if you are in and studying, uh, whether you call it age of Aquarius, whether you, even if you don't believe in astrology, there's something happening, right? There's something happening that's changing. The planet is, is almost in some respects shedding its own skin, right? Look at all the weather and the climate change and all of that kind of stuff. We're going through a change and I'm not, I'm not even political about it. So as people are waking up to their truth of enlightenment, spiritual awakening, also known as Ascension symptoms, Kat, um, Catlin and I are going to talk about that on my podcast on March 17th. What are these Ascension symptoms and why is it important for you to know? Because they can be anger, can be rage, can be depression, can be anxiety. A lot of my symptoms through this work, if I went to the regular doctor, they'd say there's nothing wrong with me. So if that's happened for you, it's probably because you're awakening. So bringing it closer in, healers are becoming extra powerful. My husband's gifts and skills are crazy powerful. Mine are getting stronger. 
more people are uncovering psychic gifts and developing at a super fast rate. And, and when I say psychic, I'm also talking about intuition, okay? Because I know sometimes that word can trigger people. Um, people are wanting to earn living in a meaningful way. They're, look at the great resignation. People don't just want to work for the sake of working anymore. People are less willing to compromise and love. There have been a lot of partnership breakups and things of that nature, or in my case, I thought I was getting a divorce. However, my husband took this ride with me and, and we're both in a much, much better space. It's more difficult to conform, right? <laughs> you have to find a way to live that allows your uniqueness to shine, which I love that. Again, that, that black sheep of the family possibly. And you have something unique to offer to the world. I believe that. That's why you're here on this call because you know there's something about you that is unique and amazing. You just got to dig a little bit more deeper, just like I did, to reconnect to who you truly are. So in this changing time, I believe we're being called to learn how to reparent those places in our emotional psyche that have been abandoned from this life and our ancestors. We're learning to find that maturation in ourselves finding that sacred union of those masculine, feminine polarities, again, mother, father figures, but there's also energies. Your brain, left hemisphere is the masculine, right is the feminine, and then it crosses over. That's why Kundalini yoga is so powerful. It helps balance those polarities and works with your chakras. And I'm not going to go over all of that, but that's why I created this and why I'm talking so openly about it, because there is hope. So how are you going to enter the age of Aquarius? Again, if you believe in that or, or whatever this new world that we're birthing and going through this changing transformational process. I know people are even saying that money may not even exist in a few years. I don't know. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with that, but there that means you've got to really shine your uniqueness. You've got to reclaim your spiritual gifts, your truth, because I believe we all have gifts to share and then speak your truth and if you have a business, even if you don't have a business, you know, if you have a career, be seen, be heard, and be paid what you're worth. All of these fundamentals are here to help you transcend the shadow work and be into the light and shine your light into the world. So fundamental number five, I'm going to touch on this briefly, but it's so critical because I was in health and fitness. And I also know the damage three to four bottles of wine a week did to me, right? And again, I'm not judging it anymore. I'm just saying it added 30 pounds to my waistline and hurt my digestion and all of that kind of stuff. So I do have a recommendation um, and I actually have other partners that I'm starting to refer. This just happened to be a really cool opportunity. My friend owns this company. So it's Nourish and it's only three products like superfoods and cellular detox um, supplementation, things like that nature. So if, if people want to, I have a discount code if you're looking for something that can help you at the cellular level. Because if you're eating a lot of crappy food or like I was having a lot of dopamine hits between work notifications, you're gonna have a lot of toxins and free radicals floating around in your body. And that it, it's like a, it's a vicious cycle, right? So you wanna make sure you feed yourself. I also have um, become a bit of a plant medicine woman. So microdosing with psilocybin, also known as magic mushrooms. I have a 30 day jump start. That's, that's totally um, just, it's available if you have any interest, but it can help with anxiety, sleep issues, meditation, focus, grief recovery, addictive behaviors. It's actually where I started. Honestly, it was microdosing with psilocybin. Completely changed my type A personality, slowed me down, helped me meditate better. Um, and of course that's a, a separate investment if someone's interested in that. So really quickly, because um, I, I did want to leave it open for questions, and I realize it's 155 right now, so I'm going to go really, really fast. If you have questions, start putting them in the Q&A feature. Um, I can go over the schedule review in the vault if we don't run out of time, um, but this challenge um, did start last week. However, it's going for another 30 days. It ends March 31st. Busting through your addictive behaviors, getting to the root cause, again, doesn't happen overnight. Um, however, if you put your effort in time into this, I can guarantee you, you're gonna have at least one breakthrough. If you show up to class and you do the work, I believe you'll have at least one breakthrough. I'll drop the link for that in the chat. It is a first time beta offer. I've never done it before. I am I love being transparent and I love beta testers. I don't know if you guys have ever done a beta program. Um, it's only $97. 
and that's just two bucks a day. Um, remember I said I spent 60 grand over two years. So I really wanted to make this affordable for you. There's also the option for superfoods. If you want to go there, that's roughly 197, depending on uh, what you decide to purchase. And then the microdosing is a separate investment if you are open to that. So next time I do this, I'm going to charge a thousand dollars or more. Um, so remember you're getting three weekly meditations, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. Two weekly classes, again, today at three, we have the uh, um, Kundalini class. And then tomorrow is the unconscious, making the unconscious conscious class. And we'll be doing the ancestral work. And then you also have member vault access to all the recordings, all the meditations, all of the super conscious creation work, breath work. Um, literally, it's an online academy to help you transform and heal your life. I had a couple of testimonials I wanted to share because I know my stories are great, but it's better when it's clients. Um, one gal who was really struggling with social media, she is a millennial, so not surprising on some level, right? She decided she had a really unhealthy relationship with social media and her apps on her phone. So less than two weeks, she fully pulled back and working with me um, has, has helped her truly focus. She feels so much better and more present at work and in her relationships. Overall, much more connected and healthier. And this is actually just some really, she had a really long testimonial, but I just wanted to give you contacts before she was on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, mindlessly scrolling. She'd check first thing, even before getting out of bed, unconscious behavior that was causing dopamine hits in impacting her sleep. So she deleted all her apps. Even when the limitations on the apps didn't support her, she had to delete them. <laughs> Two weeks after her apps were being deleted, um, she's down 44%. She can now watch a show or a movie without scrolling on her phone. She's more present with herself and her relationships, listening to people more. And she's also going to find other productive things to do. If you have questions, remember, put them in the Q&A feature now. The Q&A feature is at the bottom. I don't want to miss them. Um, now she's reading more. She's walking more. All of those things are improving her mood and her health. Another ancestral um, client of mine uh, who's done a lot of healings in her life, um, she believes all of them help peel back that layer of the onion, but she almost never feels a difference after just one session. If it's, you know, acupuncture or these other things, you tend to go a lot, especially the chiropractor or anything like that. After just one session with me and my husband, she felt a big shift and friends told her that they could feel it and see it too. She's so much more calm as a mom and a wife. And she didn't realize how much connecting with the healed and wise ancestors could impact her life. So that was an ancestral testimonial. So just think about this, guys. What one addictive behavior in your life right now that takes up a lot of headspace, a lot of ego, maybe self-critic that can help you get to the root cause and release that, that will shift your world. And then when you release something and it takes up headspace, what can you call into your life that will transform you mind, body, and soul? Just think about that for a second. And I love this picture of these little baby ducklings <laughs> taking a leap into the deep end of the pond or the lake. Imagine if you sign up today, what your life could look like if you have just one breakthrough, decreasing one addictive behavior because you understand yourself. Knowing thyself is how you heal yourself. Coming back to who you truly are and who you were meant to be in this lifetime, in this body, in this form, that's healing yourself. And so I really invite you to join me on this journey with the five fundamentals. Um, if you have any questions, you guys have been amazing. Thank you, Harumi, Diana, Helene. I didn't get to see everyone's name. Lori, yay, you made it. Renee, awesome. Vera, woohoo. Excellent. So good to see some of my referral partners on here that I can refer to others as well. Um, I want to be a, a, a kind of like a gatekeeper, someone who has access to all of these people, these beautiful gifts, these beautiful assets. Let me grab the link. If you would like to sign up for the 40 day challenge, the ultimate, I would say you could really sign up anytime and still get incredible value for, you know, a program that offers up so much more than, than what you'd be paying. So any questions, anyone 
have any questions that you can put in the Q&A feature. If no questions, type in the chat, what is one aha uh -huh, or favorite takeaway, if you had one, that really like impressed you or it blew your mind, type in the chat one aha uh -huh, or takeaway before I close the call. I'd love to learn from you guys. This is your time to shine. Don't be shy. No takeaways. It's a lot to take in. It's also, I wanna acknowledge that it's, it's a lot to take in. Um, if I would have had, you know, all of this knowledge two years ago, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine where I'd be. If you have access to the member vault already, do you still, Good point. That's right. Cause you were in my super conscious, um, uh, program. So you had access to the 12 months. So what you'll need to do, actually, I don't think you should have been getting the emails. Tiffany, you've been receiving the emails already inviting you to the challenge. So I'm not sure if you, if you haven't been seeing them, usually I give a 30 minute heads up. We're going to be talking in 30 minutes. So if you're not getting those emails, then send me an email, Tiffany, you know how to reach me on email so I can check on that. But because you're already a part of, because you were one of my uh, super conscious creation small group members. So you still have access to it, I think for just a few more months. Cool. All right, guys. Well, last quote, because we did go over. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Just remember, in this society where oftentimes instant gratification is all too easy, just remember the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Be patient and stay the course. The day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Be patient and stay the course. I grew up on a farm, so I understand that very, very well. That opportunity to be able to see the harvest and the fruit, my dad had to work his tail feathers off a lot of tilling the soil, a lot of weed killing or pulling, a lot of faith, a lot of trust. And farmers work seven days a week, 365 days a year. So your healing journey, remember, is not instant gratification. There's a winter, a spring and a summer and a fall. Just make sure you have support. You cannot do this alone. Even if it's not me, I hope you can find a community that has a similar offering. I don't know of one, but please, please find support. Um, don't do this alone. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys inside of the challenge and hopefully see some new members on the 3 p.m. Kundalini yoga class. All right, take care guys. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>